Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Elmore. I am a captain with Legacy Airline. Uh, I've been a captain since December 2016. Uh, I fly the Airbus Family 320 uh, aircraft. I've been flying with Legacy for ooh, since 1999, so 22 years now with uh, Legacy Airline. And I'm just happy to be here today and share my experiences uh, with Tony. Uh, he's an awesome host. So I'm looking forward to the podcast. And thank you for being here. You know, we we recently discovered that, or at least I recently came to the realization that there's an entire generation, as you mentioned, the, the next class of pilots that are currently working their way through the system to, to someday potentially be a, an airline pilot or a cargo pilot or, or whatnot. And they're working their way through their ratings and they were not born some of them 20 years ago, or they were in diapers and they don't really realize the gravity of, of what happened on September 11th, 2001. And so mm -hmm. I wanted to speak with a few of my favorite captains around mm -hmm. the system that were actually flying and were experiencing it not only firsthand as a as a American citizen, but as an airline pilot. What do you right. recall of the moment that you first found out about the events that happened on 9-11? Wow, so a uh, huge, huge mixed bag of emotions. Uh, so I'll start out with, I was awakened uh, in the morning of 9-11 with a phone call from a fellow naval aviator friend of mine. And he called and said, hey, where are you? And I said, I'm at home. I just got back from Paris. Uh, it was my first trip that I had flown internationally prior to that. I was flying 7576s domestic. I had flown flight 11. I had flown flight 77. Uh, so I was very familiar and people that knew me knew that I was flying those domestic routes. Uh, I did a, a quick two week trip to uh, Korea for uh, neighbor reserve work. So that was my first trip back uh, Paris, LA to Paris. And I got back September 10th. So that morning my phone rang with my buddy, Phil saying, where are you? I said, I'm, I'm at home. He goes, well, turn on the TV and just let me know uh, how you're doing after you turn on the TV and we'll chat later. So as I turned on the TV, it was a replay of flight 11 going into the tower. And I just remember, I still get goosebumps now, sitting there going, oh, my God. And I didn't know what to think. Like at first I thought when before, just before the, the, the plane went into, into the building, the way they were talking, I thought it was like a small general aviation aircraft. And then when I saw not only the, the, the airplane going to the tower, but the American airlines colors, the live, uh, the, uh, library, I, I just, I was, I didn't know what to do. I, I mean, I, think I cried. Uh, I got angry as I watched the, the broadcast um, and formulated my own opinions. And I was stuck to the TV pr for the rest of the day as my phone continued to ring. People asking me, where are you? How are you doing? And uh, that was my memory of, of that, that moment. Yeah. And I mean, we've all, those of us that were alive at that time and, and adults or even teens uh, and watching it on TV, it absolutely left everyone in awe of what was happening. I think there are moments in our lifetimes that we remember where we were. Mm. The first time the man set foot on the moon. Mm -hmm. that we accomplished that enormous feat 
it was mm-hmm. a positive event and those that were alive at the time knew exactly where they were what they were doing what they were wearing mm-hmm. another time was the JFK assassination mm-hmm. the first time we heard that our president had been assassinated in Texas mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Martin Luther King assassination mm-hmm. these were pivotal moments in our lives those of us that were alive at the time Mm -hmm. and we'll never forget where we were because it affects us so much 9-11 is no different those Mm -hmm. terrorist attacks on our soil the largest terrorist attack to ever happen on u.s soil Mm -hmm. it became very real for a lot of people it wasn't just some war some some campaign happening somewhere else this was happening Right. right here right and if you didn't live through it, all you can do is learn about it in the history books. Right. And it's not the right. same. Right. And and for me, it was it was almost personal because I grew up in the Bronx. I grew up not far from downtown, midtown Manhattan, where those towers were. And uh, they were under construction for most of my childhood. So, you know that that's all we talked about as kids like oh man they're building the tallest two buildings in the world you know and in, in, in our hometown uh so it was it was almost like somebody had stolen something somebody had had damaged something that belonged to me uh and that's why i meant when i said I, it was personal um and and probably a lot of the reason i felt the anger and the rage that i felt um because of the attacks. Yeah. And that leads me to my next question. How long did the events of that day go on to affect your family? Oh, for weeks, months. I mean, I remember, I mean, as being prior military, uh, in fact, I was still in the reserve at the time uh, you know, concerned about being recalled, being, you know, going over to have to fight and defend our, our freedom, uh, and retaliate for the attacks. So that was a concern. And the other concern was when were we going to resume our, our lives, our, our, our work? Uh, for me, you know, that's, that's interesting too, because, I fully expected to return to work with, you know, I don't know if it was just the way I was trained, but it never crossed my mind that I would not return to the cockpit. Uh, It was just, I don't know if it's second nature, uh, but I never, I was never concerned about, I, I guess I was a little concerned about the security, but I knew that my job was going to be to get back in that cockpit and get things back to normal as soon as possible. Yeah, absolutely. Now the industry before the events of September of 2001 was much different than it is now. And part of that flying, there was a lot more glamor to it. You know, you could walk up to the gate and see your your family off at the gate. You know, there was no TSA. There was no, you know, bulletproof cockpit door. I mean, the tone of the industry, both at work with your coworkers and, you know, dropping off family at the airport was completely different. What do you remember of how life was before 9-11? I remember people being able to come up to the cockpit and say hi, especially like maybe the nervous flyers uh, come and, you know, knock the flight attendant would knock it on the door and somebody would peek in and say hi, or uh, just the way we went about business as far as uh, um, our friends and families that were allowed to fly with us at legacy. Uh, All that changed the way we uh, had to register them and, uh, uh, yeah, no, basically I wouldn't say there was no TSA, so to speak, there was security, but it was a lot more lax than it is, than it is now. Um, you know, no concerns about 
bring in a wa- bottle of water. Uh, you know, just little things that that change the the way things are done today. Yeah. And what changes have you seen in the industry following the return of the flying after 9-11 that have really been shaped since that event? Uh, one of the biggest ones that came out of, uh, came out of the, the whole ordeal was the introduction of the Federal Flight Deck Officer Program, where you have volunteers allowed to uh, um, go and get training on a weapon and voluntarily uh, carry a weapon in the cockpit at various airlines. Um, The air marshal program changed a little bit. The doors on the cockpit are reinforced Kevlar now. Uh, A lot of protocols, security protocols on how um, flight attendants and pilots interact to lower the capability of anyone uh, penetrating the, the, the cockpit door. Those are just some of the some of the things that have changed. How long did it take for you to get back to flying after nine eleven? Uh, I'm I'm not I don't remember exactly how long. Maybe about two weeks, but I do remember the flight uh, very well, like it was yesterday, uh, because I flew with the, one of my favorite captains at Legacy. Uh, and it was an LA Kona trip. And I remember it well because we had a family of three. It was a gentleman, his wife, and their elderly father that was traveling with them. And it was so odd because they, one of the flight attendants was uncomfortable with the presence of these three individuals. And I think it was because of their uh, Middle Eastern ethnicity. And we ended up having to get the gate agent involved. And as it turns out, the couple and the father had purchased their ticket with cash and they had no check bags. And it was something that we had to deal with. Uh, The captain had to make a decision whether or not he was going to allow this family to fly with us because the flight attendant was uncomfortable. And he ended up having them booked on a or having the gate agent uh, accommodate them on a later flight because we didn't want to inconvenience the rest of the flight because the flight attendant was uncomfortable and we were trying to accomplish our mission, which was to fly to Kona. So that, that particular day, we would obviously never had that problem uh, prior to nine 11, but it was just kind of an indicator on probably I'm sure a lot of different carriers, how crews had to deal with now uh, this, this new threat or this new problem. Yeah. Oh, we suddenly changed the way we look at those around us and everyone was now suspect. Right. Right. And one of the other things, you know, I, that kind of occurred to me was I knew by you know, watching the the media that, you know, there were the attacks, but prior to the attacks, there were people that had infiltrated or had been on these flights, domestic flights, basically watching, taking notes. And so the, the threat was, was still pretty, pretty existent. And uh, you know, who's to say that they weren't still doing uh, scouting and, 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 you know, plotting for another attack. So 
it was a, a very real threat that, uh, like you, you asked earlier, how long did this affect you? Well, I mean, I think today people still look at people with skepticism. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, they call it profiling, but it's something that is a product of, of what we experienced. And, and it's still in the back of everyone's mind that was alive to remember it. Yeah. And so you have this opportunity now, 20 years later, to give advice to a young aviator that may have not been old enough to realize the significance at the time. Mm -hmm. How would you express how important remembering the events of that day are to a young aviator that just wasn't able to comprehend it at the time? Uh, I would, I would say my advice to any aviator would be just, you know, be cognizant of your surroundings. One of the byproducts for me from 9-11 is when I walk up to the gate and, and I don't do it as, as I, I would say, I, I'm not as meticulous as I was before, but I notice people in the gate area and maybe, maybe a little bit more now because of the whole COVID uh, thing and how the passenger conduct has taken a turn for the worse, it seems like, but you do need to pay attention and be cognizant of people in the gate area, the people that are going to get on your airplane and potentially affect your mission of getting from point A to point B. So uh, I would say be cognizant of your surroundings and also don't be a hero. You know, your mission is to fly that aircraft from point A to point B. Uh, anything that happens behind that door is not your problem. Uh, and I've had the urge to go take a peek back even post 9-11 uh, from some passenger misconduct issues. But, you know, my captain would look over at me and said, don't even think about it. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> not your problem. Yeah. Uh, so that's the big difference. And, and, and I think passengers are more willing now these days to not let something like that ha happen. Uh, so we don't have to worry about that. So I would pass that on to, to the young aviators too, is let everybody behind the door take care of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, it's a great point that you had as well that keep your situational awareness going, not just on the flight deck, but beyond. Mm -hmm. Because when you put that uniform on at the beginning of your day, until that uniform comes off, reality is you represent what you do. Right. Even if right. you're, you know, at the hotel or on the van. Right. And being aware gives you the tools to be safe. Right. Right. Yeah. And speaking of putting on the uniform and representing legacy or any other carrier, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because passengers are just different these days. Uh, I went to, uh, a restaurant slash bar to order in Orlando. And I just happened to have to go up to the bar to ask the, the bartender uh, if I could have help or place in my to-go order. And there was a couple of passengers, you know, who knows where they were going. Uh, and one of them was intoxicated and the gentleman approached me and said, can I buy you a drink? <laughs> and my th first thought was, is this guy out of his mind? Does he not see me in, in my uniform getting ready to fly? Uh, and then my other instinct was to be, you know, say something to him. Yeah. But then I thought, okay, that's not going to come out well. Right. So the best thing that I could do in that particular situation or any situation is keep my mouth shut, smile and walk away. <laughs> yeah. Especially with everybody's uh, movie studio in their pocket. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's what I, I tell a lot of my first officers now that I fly with. Keep, keep me off of CNN. 
keep me off of <laughs> uh, uh, out of the news and and out of those those pocket cameras. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm uh, grateful that we, as a country, as a nation, uh, still take time to remember the significance of what happened. Um, I'm honored to be an American. I'm honored to fly with Legacy Airline and represent uh, my airline with pride and and dignity. And um, I think it's important what you're doing and and remembering the events of 9-11 because there's a generation now that that wasn't, wasn't present. And so it's it's nice to be able to pass that baton through history and and through our uh, our memories. Well said. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony, for having me. 